Okay, so today we are going to do a few tips on how to make your scene look a little better. This video will be split into four parts. The first one, we will discuss linear properties in Blender. So like shadows and ambient occlusion and such. The second part will be a discussion about geometry and normal maps on models and meshes. The third part will be about image textures. And the fourth one will be about light usage to make your scene look a bit better. So let us begin. I have a scene here. And as you can see, it doesn't look bad, but we can make it look a bit better with some settings in Blender. So, let's just zoom in. And the first one we'll tick is Ambient Occlusion. The reason why we use Ambient Occlusion is because what it does is, it allows Blender to render in contact shadows between different meshes. As you can see when I put them on and off, you can see the little difference. And the second one will be something called Bloom. As you can see when the light hits this building, it lets off some nice halo effect. So when I put it off, it disappears. When I put it on, it appears. So that helps influence the scene to make it look a little more like anime. The next one will be screen space refraction. Uh, as you can see, it makes a huge difference if you have something like roughness maps, which I have on this road. It allows EV to render some reflections. The next part will be the shadow settings of the render. When I change the cascade size of the shadows, it makes the entire scene look better. It makes the shadows more detailed and it stops light spilling through the windows on parts where you wouldn't necessarily want light, you wouldn't want shadow. Uh, obviously the shadows are hard for me because I unticked the soft shadow option uh, under the shadow box. If you tick that, it'll, the shadows will be a bit more soft for you. So it depends on the style you're going for, obviously. Also, if you'd want your scene to be a bit more smooth, you can just uh, set all the settings to low and then just before you render, you can set them back to the settings you'd want and then render them. Now we're going to speak about normal maps and actual geometry on your models. So I have two textures and two models. One model has a texture with zero normal maps, but it has extra geometry in it. So I extruded cubes on this pillar, but there are no normal maps on it. The second one has normal maps and no extruded cubes on them. In the camera viewport, uh, the normal maps are working as they normally would, but they don't give the right effect that I would necessarily want in my scene. In this instance, I would opt to add actual geometry on the model and not give it any normal maps because it makes it look better and it allows the light to distribute a bit more uh, realistically. But this depends on your scene and how you would want the scene to look because depending on the scene, you would rather want actual normal maps than actual geometry for say maybe a wooden texture, you would just use an image texture and plug that through a bump map or a normal map. So that would be better. But in this instance, actual geometry would work. And now we are going to move to using image textures. And here in this scene, you can see there are no image textures on this desk and chair. So it looks kind of bad. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to add a wood image texture and then unwrap it. So I'm just going to press U and then say Smart UV Project and then I'm just going to rotate it and move it until I like what I see in the wooden texture. If you want to view the uh, the nodes like I'm doing, just press Ctrl, Shift and click if you have the node angular add-on enabled but if you don't, you need to enable it through Edit and Preferences and then search for node angular. It's built within Blender. And now I'm just going to make a simple wood texture. So I'm going to bring in a mixed color, set that to color and make the B color a bit orange and plug the image texture in the top A socket. Then I'm going to duplicate the mix color which is set to color and play around with the hues on the B socket. After that I just brought in another one and set that to mix. So 
So, it looks a little bit better, but not exactly. I'm going to edit this a bit more. I'm going to just change the uh, image texture that I used. And there we go, it looks a little bit better. But I'm going to edit that even further and add more detail to this texture. Maybe change the oranges of the wood and play with the mix factor. And then I'm going to add a gradient node. This is so I can add shadow at the bottom of the table and chairs so that it looks a little bit more convincing. You can learn more about the mix color and the gradient node on some other tutorials in my YouTube channel. I will link these tutorials to see on screen in the description below. Then I'm going to set this mix color to a multiply. I'm also now going to add another gradient node, but this one is to add a light highlight within the texture itself to add more detail onto the shader. So I'm going to duplicate the gradient node, plug that into the mix color that I just added and set that to, to soft light instead of the multiply. Then I'm going to rotate the gradient node so that the light is coming in the direction that the window is pointing. So it looks like the light is coming from the window. And now we have made the texture look way better compared to how it used to look, as you can see. And obviously you can edit this however you want, I just made a simple wood texture for the scene. Now we are going to move on to the last part of the tutorial, which is adding extra lights within a scene. So I'm going to bring in an area light for this chair here, so that it has some highlights that seem to be coming from the window. And now. Uh, just by me adding the light, it looks already a bunch better. I'm just going to duplicate this light and then place them throughout the scene in appropriate places, like where the window is facing, that is where the light will hit, and I will also lower the brightness of the lights when necessary. These are just general tips on how to make a scene look better. So. To summarize everything, I would recommend people to play around with the render settings, see how the ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space diffraction works, and check the shadow properties on which one looks best for your scene. Sometimes the soft shadows work best, sometimes low quality shadows work best, and so on. Then I would also recommend people experimenting between actual geometry meshes and bump node and normal meshes, because sometimes you don't need geometry on a mesh. You just need a proper bump map to enable some distortion on the model so that it looks pretty convincing. Like this brick texture for example that I made in my animate texture course that is coming up on the Patreon soon, inshallah. Uh, I used just normal maps, I didn't use any image textures or any geometry on this plane. And I just want to give a very warm thank you to those on the Golden Spoon tier list. Your support is much appreciated and I'm very excited to announce the first part of the anime texture course. But now let's get back to the video. And then I'd also recommend people experimenting with image textures because sometimes procedural textures don't make the cut. You just need to experiment with some images, maybe manipulate those with some mixed colors or gradient nodes or brightness and compass nodes or things like those. And finally, I would also recommend people using lights. Maybe you look at your scene, maybe there's a window at the back, see which direction the light moves and then place the lights accordingly. So those were my general tips for making scenes look better in general and also in anime style. But that is it for me today. Hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something. See you in the next one. Alright, bye.